Good afternoon, church. It's a blessing to connect with you this afternoon once again as we open up the book of Isaiah and see what the Lord has for us. We're going through, in a sense, rather quickly, but at the same time, we're looking at the, the main thoughts, looking how those thoughts are, are, are shown throughout the chapters we're looking at and trying to see uh, the message that the Lord is bringing to the people, the people of uh, Judah. Uh, as as Isaiah speaks to them about the coming consequence, what is going to happen if they don't uh, wake up, if they don't realize what the Lord is is saying and doing, if they don't have understanding. And that's where we're going to go today. That's where we're going to look at, because today we're going to see the consequences of our lack of understanding, our lack of knowledge. And I think this is a, is a key point uh, as we seek to go get to know God's word more seek to understand God's word. We see what happens when we don't. <laughs> what happens when we uh, don't have the knowledge that we need? Uh, the consequences are obviously very obvious. Uh, and it begins here in Isaiah 28. And it says, you know, whoa, this is kind of a warning. Whoa, watch out. Woe to the crown of pride and the drunkards of Ephraim. And he's talking there of Israel. Woe to those who are, in a sense, drunk in their own will and their own knowledge. And, and it's kind of, kind of a lament, as, as it says, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, which is the head of the verdant valleys, to those who are overcome with wine. Once beautiful, but the beauty is this fading flower. This beauty is fading away because they've been overcome with wine. Uh, and, and they've just been so full of themselves, full of their pride, full of who they are, and they're just drunk with it. And the Lord says, behold, verse 2, the Lord has a mighty and strong one, like a tempest of hail, destroying storm, like a flood of mighty waters overflowing, who will bring them down to the earth with his hand. The crown of pride, the drunkards of Ephraim, will be trampled underfoot, and the glorious beauty is a fading flower, which is the head of the virgin valley. You're going to be trampled. You're drunk with yourself. You're drunk with just, just fulfilling your own desires, and you're going to be uh, destroyed. Um, verse 5 says, In that day the Lord of hosts will be a crown of glory and a diadem of beauty to the remnant of his people. Once the, this destruction comes, the people wake up and see what's happening and see what they're doing. He, uh, then they will return to the Lord, and the Lord will be this crown of glory again. It says, for a spirit of justice to him who sits in judgment and for the strength to those who turn back at the battle at the gate. But they have also erred through wine. Once again, the, the, their, their error is through wine, through intoxicating drink are out of the way. And it says, the priest and the prophet have erred through intoxicating drink. They're swallowed up by wine. They're out of the way through intoxicating drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. There, for the tables are full of vomit and filth. No one, no place is clean. And see, that's the problem. The priests and the prophets, those who are supposed to be, in a sense, the source of wisdom, of God's wisdom, they're drunk with themselves also. And, and they're, they're, they're stumbling in the judgment. Their, their vision is, 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 is not correct. So they're not seeing the things the Lord is showing them. They're not saying the things that they're supposed to be saying. And here's a question that we kind of look at in these next chapters, verse 9. Whom will he teach knowledge and whom will he make to understand the message? Who's going to teach this? Who's going to show this? Uh, who's, going to, who's going to show the message the Lord has to bring? Those who just wean from milk, those who just draw them from the breast, just the, the babies maybe, because the adults aren't, are doing that. And it says, for precept must be upon precept. Uh, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to his people, to the, whom he said, this is a rest, which you may cause the weary to rest. And this is refreshing, yet they would not hear. So, so God is, is, is showing them from his word, showing them, I want to bring you to rest. I want you to, to, to uh, rest from your weary. I want you to be refreshed. But it said they would not hear. They didn't have the knowledge. They didn't have the people who were sharing the knowledge. And it said, the word of the Lord was to them, precept upon precept, uh, line upon line, here a little, there a little. 
And it's almost like this children's, you know, this, this was for children. No, this is, this is not for us. This is, you know, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. It's kind of a kid stuff, you know. And, and the Lord said, no. Uh, he gave them the word, you know, I precept the, the teaching upon teaching, line upon line, the line, and then the, the, the verse upon verse, uh, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and caught. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord, you scornful men who rule the people who are in Jerusalem. Hear what the Lord says because you are not listening to his word. Um, because you have said we have made a covenant with death and, she and with Sheol we are in agreement. When the overflowing scourge passes through, it will not come for us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood we have hidden ourselves. Basically, when this destruction comes, when they're looking at these armies that are coming, right? Them for the Israel was the Assyrians. When they come, oh, it won't. Nothing will happen to us. Uh, we'll be okay. Uh, we made a covenant with death. Uh, we we may, we're going to be fine. Uh, this scourge will pass through, and it will not come to us. And here's the thing: they have left knowledge, but what has happened? It says here, for we have made lies our refuge. And isn't that sad? Um, we can see this nowadays, you know, people refusing to listen God to God's word, instead listening to lies and, and seeking refuge in those lies. Lies about self, lies about who they are, and lies about, you know, life, what, what life is all about. And, and, it, and it's, it's sad because they think, well, because I've, I have this, this lie, this knowledge that I think I have, uh, I'm, I don't, I'm going to reject the knowledge of God because I am my own person. Everybody's an individual. Everybody's, you know, this is my way. These are my ideas. And so I guess since truth for them is, is relative, everybody has their own truth, then, you know, we can just believe that until the truth <laughs> that is not relative that it, uh, comes and, and we see a subjective and uh, the reality hits. Uh, I was reading as preparing here, uh, Charles Spurgeon uh, shares six lies that men might take refuge in. So six lies that men might take refuge in. The first, the lies that we are or can be good enough. We all love that one. That we are or we can be good enough. The lie that fate or predestination determines all. So there's nothing for us to do. It's all in the cards. You know, it's all said and uh, there's nothing i can do to change things so i might as well just kind of go through it the lie that places confidence in new false teaching there it is you know the teaching of self the teaching of you know your truth my truth new false teaching that places the confidence in that the lie that religious profession is enough and that's you know look at the false teachers and prophets he was talking about there they are drunk in their own knowledge oh i'm a i'm a priest i'm a prophet well that's enough no the lie that one can be saved, have a saved soul and an unchanged life. And isn't that what many Christians are living today? You can have a saved soul. I, I said the prayer. I know the day. I have it written down in my Bible, but my life hasn't changed. And that's a lie we can take refuge in, in that one can have a saved soul and an unchanged life. The lie that trusts an old experience instead of an ongoing relationship. Something that happened in the past. In the past, this happened. In the past, this happened. I, I felt this. I, I did this. I, I came to the Lord here. But what about now? How am I living now? And see, that's something we like to ignore. Well, I was this. I was this. I was this. But what about now? What are you now? And you see, those are the lies that we can, as, even as Christians, um, find refuge in instead of finding refuge in God's word that's why here in um in verse 16 it says thus says the lord behold i lay in zion a stone for a foundation a tried stone a precious cornerstone a sure foundation whoever believes will not act hastily and, and this is something we actually looked at sunday talking about the, the cornerstone uh, jesus being that foundation stone up in which the church is built and, and this is what the lord's saying i'm gonna i'm gonna put this foundation stone and you need to build your life on Jesus. You need to build your life on this sure foundation. Whoever believes will not act hastily, but will act with knowledge, with, with understanding, because the idea is to get to know Christ. And as we get to know Christ, we build our life on him. That sure foundation. 
and says in righteousness, uh, and I also will make justice the measuring line. And so we have this little kind of, a, in a sense, a plumb line that shows us what is right. Jesus, in his teachings, what he teaches in the Bible, and those who followed after him, the apostles, gave us a kind of this line that we're supposed to follow, these teachings of how we're supposed to live our life. That's why God's word is that, you know, precept upon precept, line upon line, uh, you know, and as we look at, you know, studying chapter a uh, book by book chapter by chapter verse by verse it is a manual for life and as we go through this we see truths that come out and it's that plumb line that teaches us are we living straight are we are we walking the straight and narrow as, as it's called as we're are we living for christ look at what god's word says and let us uh, follow that so how are we living how are we uh walking through this life um i will make justice living that just life. And that's what Christ does in us, gives us that life in him, that measuring line. And the righteous and righteousness, the plummet. You know, so we see justice, the line, and the plummet, the, the, and it's the plumb bob that, that brings, you know, that makes that line straight. Righteousness will be the plummet. And the hail will sleep away, it will sweep away the refuge of lies. And as this, this difficult time comes, the refuge of lies will be swept away. The things that they've taken, taken comfort again, once again, uh, lie that we are good enough, uh, that we can be good enough, lie that uh, fate or predestination determines all, lie that praises confidence in new uh, or false teachings, a lie that just being religious is enough, a lie that we can have a saved soul but an unchanged life, a lie that trusts old experience instead of ongoing relationship, and many other lies. As these, this hail comes, this will all be swept away and we'll see who is following the path they need to do. The waters will overflow their hiding place. They're not going to get away with this. They're going to, to uh, miss out. They're going to be destroyed. And it says, your covenant with death will be annulled. Your agreement with Sheol will not stand. When the overflowing scourge passes through, you'll be trampled down by it. As often as it goes out, it will take you. For morning by morning will pass over, and day and, and day by and by day and by night, it will be a terror just to understand the report. For the bed is too short to stretch out on, and the covering so narrow that no one can wrap himself in. There won't be enough. Your lies will be destroyed. The Lord will rise up as Mount Perizim. He will be angry as the Valley of Gibeon, that he will do his work, his awesome work. He will bring it to pass his unusual act. Now, therefore, do not be mockers, lest your bonds be made strong. For I've heard from the Lord God of hosts, a destruction determined upon the whole earth. And, and here it is. You lack knowledge. You've hidden in lies. These lies are going to be swept away. The, God is going to send his word to be that plumb line, that measuring line, those who follow him. And... God is calling them. You need this knowledge. You need to know. You need understanding. Look at my word. It's that, it's that manual for life. Uh, verse 23, give ear, hear my voice, listen and hear my speech. Listen, listen, listen. Gain understanding. Seek the Lord. Get to know him. Does the plowman keep plowing all day to sow? Does he keep turning the soil by breaking the clods? When he has leveled the surface, does he not sow black cumin and scatter the cumin, place wheat in rows, the barley in appointed place and spelt in his place? For he instructs him in righteousness. His God teaches him. He does just like a plowman is plowing through and plowing those lines and planting the seed. The Lord is going to work. He's teaching him. Uh, God teaches him. God teaches us. Um, and and it is this whole process of growth that needs to happen as this he is growing you know the crops in their place uh and also um as as he's preparing not only that to make food uh it talks later about verse 28 about bread flour must be ground therefore he does not thresh it forever bread uh, break it with his cartwheel or crush it with the horseman this also comes from the Lord of hosts, who is wonderful in counsel, excellent in guidance. The Lord will do his work. The Lord will cause this to happen. Listen to him, gain knowledge for him. And this is important. It's kind of, a, it's going to be the, the focus of what the chapters we're looking at today, the lack of knowledge, the lack of knowledge of the people. So we go to the next chapter, chapter 29, nine, and once again, whoa, <laughs> a lot of woes here for Isaiah. Woe to Ariel. Who's Ariel? Ariel, it means Lion of God. Uh, basically, the city where David dwelt. And of course, we know it as Jerusalem. Woe to Jerusalem. I will distress Ariel, Jerusalem. Now we went from Israel, you know, Ephraim, now to Jerusalem. I will distress Jerusalem. There will be heaviness and sorrow. 
and it shall be to me as Ariel. I will encamp against you all around. I will lay siege around you with a mound. I will raise siege works against you. You will be brought down. You shall speak to the ground. Your speech shall be low out of the dust. Your voice shall be like a medium's out of the ground. Your speech shall whisper out of the dust. Moreover, your multitudes of your foes shall be like fine dust. There's, there's going to be a judgment coming upon you too, Israel. Uh, verse 6, you will be punished by the Lord of hosts with thunder, earthquake, and great noise, with a storm and tempest and the flaming, devouring fire. Because these are coming against you. Uh, these, these enemies are coming against you. Um, and it ends in the end of verse 8. So the multitude of all the nations shall be who fight against Mount Zion. Judgment is coming too, because you have left the Lord. You've left the knowledge of him. Is uh, Jerusalem, which we had the temple, it was so close to the, to the Lord, the, the worship uh, place of the Lord. And no, they are also following in the same path. And, and here goes verse 9. It's, it's interesting. Once again, focused on knowledge. What is the problem? Well, verse 9, pause and wonder. Stop. Stop what you're doing. Listen, look, wonder. Look at this. Blind yourself, be blind. They are drunk, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with intoxication. As you look at this, pause and wonder, look at this, what's happening. This should actually blind you with amazement, what's happening. They are drunk, but it's not wine. They stagger, but not with intoxicating drink. So what, what's happened? The Lord has poured on you a, a spirit of a deep sleep has closed your eyes, namely the prophets. He has covered your heads, namely the seers. So the prophets can't prophesy. The seers can't see. The whole vision has come, has become to you like the words of the book that is sealed, which men can, which men deliver to one who is literate, saying, read this, please. You're, you're like trying to, to bring something that's been written in a book, but it's been sealed. And then you give it to a man who can't read to read and said, read this, please. And he can't read it. So it isn't, it's of no use. Read this, please. And he says, I'm not literate. Therefore, the Lord says, inasmuch as these people draw near with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but have removed their hearts from me. And here's the problem. Okay, so why can't they see? Why can't they prophesy? Why can't they listen to what the Lord is saying? Because they have drawn near to me with their mouth. They say, oh, Lord, yes. Oh, this, oh, amen, amen, hallelujah, Lord, yes. And honor me with their lips, but their hearts, their hearts are far from me. They say a lot of things, but they don't mean it. So that's why I can't speak to them. I can't share what's going to happen to them. That's why this, this judgment is coming up against them. Um, their fear towards me is taught by the commandments of men. Therefore, behold, I will do a marvelous work among this people, a marvelous work and a wonder. And for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. This, this, this marvelous work is some, many times not a good thing. It's a terrible thing. I'm going to do this something amazingly terrible to bring judgment on my own city, on the city of Jerusalem where the, his house was, the house of the Lord was. I'm going to bring judgment on them. So uh, uh, with their wisdom, shall wise, the wise shall perish and their understanding of their prudent men shall be hidden. Woe to those who seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord and their works are in the dark. They say, who sees us? Who knows us? Well, they try to do their own counsel. And say, nobody sees us, nobody, nobody knows us. Surely you have things turned around. Shall the potter be esteemed as a clay? For the things, shall the thing made say to him who made it, he did not make me? Or the thing formed say of him who formed it, he has no understanding. It's almost like the, the, the pot itself saying, the, the, the make, my maker doesn't know who I am. My maker didn't make me. It's like us saying God didn't, doesn't know what's going on in our lives, going on in our minds. Uh, and and we, we try to hide from him. It's like, this is amazing. It just you, you're, We're blinded by the, the arrogance and just the, the lack of understanding. Once again, there, the lack of understanding. And the Lord says, I'm going to do a marvelous thing. I'm going to bring the destruction, the destruction we have talked about here. I'm going to bring destruction upon them. Um, keep reading. Verse 17, is it not yet a very little while till Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field as to the north of them? And the fruitful field be esteemed as a forest. In that day, the deaf shall hear the words of the book and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. So, the, so once again, after destruction, after judgment comes restoration, renewal. When they realize what they've done, 
He said, even the blind shall see out of, out of darkness and understand. The deaf shall hear the words of a book. Those who didn't want to hear, those who didn't want to see, will now see. The humble shall increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. For the terrible one is brought to nothing, and the scornful one is consumed. Those who, who were not following the Lord, and those who are scornful of the Lord, those will be consumed, and all who watch for iniquity are cut off. All those who are, are um, harassing each other and, and, and uh, not helping each other, and the those who are following iniquity were cut off. Who make a man an offender by a word and lay a snare for him who reproves in the gate and turn aside the just by empty words. Those who didn't seek justice, all those will be made, be made to pay the consequences. And therefore, the Lord says, the Lord who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob, the redeemer, once again, that word is a key. He's the one who redeemed, who restores. Uh, Jacob shall, now be, shall not now be ashamed, nor shall his face now grow pale. But when he sees his children, the works of my hands in their midst, they will hallow my name. They will hallow the Holy One of Israel and fear the God of Israel. Though these who also were erred in spirit will come to understanding. There it is. Those who, once the judgment comes, those who were in error will finally come to understanding. And those who complained will learn doctrine. Once again, their lack of knowledge will be restored. They will want to know now. Once they see the judgment, once they see the consequences, they will know. And isn't that like us when we have, when we we're full of ourselves and we think we know everything, we think everything is going well. We like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got this, God. No, don't worry about it. No, I don't want to know. I, I got, I know, I know what I'm doing. Don't, I don't need you right now. No, just, uh, yeah, I, I got it. I got it. Oh, your word, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's for another time. And we just keep living our life. But when trouble comes and and difficulty comes and judgment comes, it's like, oh, Lord, help me. What your word? Yes. What do I do? And it's like, and, and it, it's, it brings us back into focus. And many times the Lord has to bring in sense judgment, uh, reproof, uh, correction, discipline. He, we are disciplined because he loves us and uh, he brings us back to him so we can understand, so we can see, so we can look for him again. And the idea is then not to stray again, not to get confident in ourselves again, but to keep following him because we have now understood the way we have now understood what we need to do uh, and not trust in the world, uh, which is kind of where he's going next as we look at chapter 30. Woe to the rebellious children, says the Lord. <laughs> the rebellious children, why the rebellious? Who take counsel, but not of me. So they want understanding, but not my understanding. Once again, the lack of understanding. Uh, they devise plans, but not of my spirit. So they have these plans, but not my plans. That they may add to their sin, who walk down to Egypt and have not asked my advice, who are going to Egypt. Now, in the Bible, in, in many times, Egypt represents the world going back to the world. The children of Israel were in captivity and bondage in Egypt, and the Lord set them free. And then they went through the desert to the promised land. And that journey through the desert, they were struggling with wanting to go back to Egypt, wanting to go back to the world. And it's kind of that picture of the Christian life. Uh, we were in bondage to sin and to this world, and we are set free. And as we're set free and given uh, you know, that new life in him, we're going to the promised land. Um, that process of going through the desert is that sanctification process as we are, uh, you know, dealing with a lot of uh, are the ways of the world in us. And we said many times want to go back to Egypt, go back to Egypt, but the Lord keeps working in us to prepare us for his uh, promised land. So don't go back to Egypt. You, you haven't asked my advice. I'll tell you, don't go back. Don't strengthen yourself in Pharaoh. Don't trust the shadow of Egypt. Verse two. The strength of Pharaoh will, be, will shall be your shame. The trust in the shadow of Egypt shall be your humiliation. Don't go back to Egypt. Uh, verse 7, for the Egyptians shall help in vain and to no purpose. The Egyptians have helped in vain of no purpose. Don't go back to the world. Trust in him. Don't have that lack of knowledge. Uh, so... Verse 8, write it on a tablet, note it on a scroll. The time has come forever and ever that this rebellious people, lying children, that's how he's talking about children who do not hear the law of the Lord. Once again, they don't hear the law of the Lord. Seers who say, do not see. Prophets who say, do not prophesy. Uh, speak to us smooth things. Prophecy and prophesy deceits. Uh, get out of my way, the Lord says. Get out of the way. Turn aside from the past. 
you know, uh, actually that's what they say, get out of the way, turn aside from the paths, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from it before us. Therefore, the Holy One of Israel answers this, because you despise this word, because you despise the knowledge, and you trust in oppression and perversity and rely on, e on them, Egypt, and these seers, and these false seers. Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you like a breath, breach ready to fall, a bulge in a high wall whose breaking comes suddenly and in an instant. And it, it'll be this breach. Um, it'll come suddenly. And, and just tragedy shall come. Um, I was reading, actually, this and thinking about in um, just recently in Mexico City, uh, we have the, the subway, the metro, and one of the lines actually goes over a street and right in one of the stations, uh, as they had the, the bridge where the metro goes by and underneath you have the cars driving, uh, the bridge that we see here bulged and actually broke. And the, the, just as the metro was going on, the, the, uh, the subway was going over, over it, it bulged and the subway went down into the streets and about, I think about 25 people died. But uh, that, that brought alarm for people seeing how, how many other places like this need repair. And, and in the recent week, they showed different uh, bridges in Mexico City that as the cars are going by, there's like little dust falling, you know, there, uh, and you can see it kind of the cracks in the, in the bridge. And, it's, and it kind of brings you to the point of saying, okay, they've trusted in their own knowledge, just like it says here, but it, that, that breaking is any moment, it just could go and collapse. And it's another tragedy waiting to happen. And he's saying, this is what they've, they've trusted themselves. And this is a breach ready to fall, a bulge in a high wall. And then when the breaking does come, it will come suddenly in an instant. He shall break it like the breaking of the potter's vessel, which is broken in pieces, he shall not spare. So there shall be not found among the fragments, nor shard to take away from the hearth, or uh, water to take from the cistern. You know, this is what's going to happen. But the Lord wants to restore. The Lord wants to bring them back. And that's why I love verse 15, I actually underlined it here. It says, for thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest, you shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. How do we, are we restored? How do we begin to get knowledge and, and, and reconnect to God in returning to him? Repenting and repenting means that that idea of we're going in this direction and we understand that this is the, the wrong way and we uh, we confess our sins, we repent uh, and then we we uh, turn back, correct and turn back to the way we should go, repenting uh, as, as we acknowledge him. Um, Second Timothy 3, 16 and 17 is God's word is useful as well. The God's word is inspired by God, this, this manual of life. The, the knowledge of God is useful, useful for instruction. And says uh, there's, you know, instruction and then correction. It corrects us. Well, actually, no, before I let me get that right. It reproves. So it shows us we're wrong. Uh, you're going the wrong way. It reproves us. Then it corrects us, and the correction means we, we're going this way, and it turns around to go this way, the correct way. It corrects us, and then instructs us in righteousness, how we are to go in that correct way. So the man of God or the, or the woman of God may be perfect uh, and, and ready to uh, equip for, for Lord's purposes in our life. And that's what he wants to do here. He wants us in returning and in that rest, resting in him, in our confidence in him, not in our own self, but in him. In quietness, what is quiet? Well, we're not talking, 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 Lord of this, Lord of that, Lord. No, we're like, Lord, what do you want me to do? And just waiting. What do we want me to do? Show me your word. Let me read your word and, and, and lead me in quietness and confidence, knowing that he's there, knowing that he leads us. We're saved, and that's our strength. And that's what the Lord is calling them to do. The sad thing is the next four words, but you would not. You trusted in Egypt. You trusted in your own knowledge. Now destruction is coming. You want to be saved, return to the Lord, rest in him, be quiet before him, have trust in him, but they wouldn't. No, we will flee on horses. We will flee. We'll ride on swift horses. Therefore, those who will pursue us shall be swift. Uh, 1,000 shall flee at the threat of one, and the threat of five, you shall flee. Uh, you will 
run for your life, but you will not be able to run far enough. Um, to your left is a pole on top of a mountain and a banner on a hill. So what do we do? Therefore, the Lord will wait. The Lord will wait um, that he may be gracious to you. Therefore, he will be exalted that he may have mercy on you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are those who wait in him. Wait on the Lord. He's a God of justice. He's gracious. He's merciful. Wait on him. Seek him. Seek the knowledge of him. For the people who dwell in the sign at Jerusalem shall weep no more. He will be very gracious to you at the sound of your cry. When he hears you, he will answer you. And though the Lord gives you the breath, bread of adversity and the waters of affliction, and says, yet your teachers shall not be moved into, into a corner anymore, but, you, but your eyes shall see your teachers. Basically, the Lord had to teach you uh, to, to see him through the bread of adversity and the water of affliction. But even though he gave you that, um, your eyes will understand what that affliction, why that affliction uh, happened. Your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. From the affliction, you will see the way you need to walk. And, and or wherever you turn to the left, you will also defile the covering of your images of silver and the ornaments of the mold, golden image. You will get them away. You'll throw them away. So, so as you, you, this affliction comes into your life and these teachers of affliction come to you and you, you listen to this, Lord will, will lead you and he will show you the way you're supposed to walk. Uh, and when you start walking that way, you will look at your images of silver and your molded image and go like, what is this garbage? Why did I follow these idols in my life? And you will throw them away like an unclean thing. You will say to them, get away from me. Then he will give you rain for your seed with which you will sow to the ground and bread to increase your earth. It will be fat and plentiful in the day, in the day your cattle will field in your large pastures. In that day, when you seek the Lord, when you realize your idols are idols and are worthless, uh, you will throw them away. Then the Lord will once again restore you. He will renew you. He will show you the way you need to walk. He will provide for you and he will lead you. And um, the Lord will be there. Uh, verse 26, more of the light of the moon, she will be as light as the sun. And the light of the sun will be sevenfold in the light of seven days. In that day, the Lord binds up the bruise of his people and heals the stroke of their wound. He will bind you up and he will heal you. When we seek him, when we listen to his voice, this is a way, walk in it, the knowledge. And we follow, we begin to realize, oh, these idols in my life, they're junk. What am I, what, why am I so focused on them? No, get them out of here, get this out of here. And we begin to follow the Lord and see his hand and his leading and how he, he works in our life. Then it's like, why was I not listening? Why, why, why was I so stuck in my own knowledge? Why didn't I get to know God? In those days, we will be blessed by the Lord and he will lead us. He will heal our bruises and our wounds and he will bind us up and uh, have mercy on us. And see, that's the God that we serve. He's a God of justice. He must punish sin, but he's also a God of love who sent his son to die for us, to give his life so that when we believe in him, we can have our sins forgiven, our sins that were crucified with him on the cross, who he paid the price. And we can be, in a sense, uh, a new person as our, the old sinful old man of us dies and the new man in Christ rises again with Christ to live this new life in Christ as we follow him and the Lord leads us and guides us. It's a beautiful picture of a lack of knowledge and when knowledge finally comes. We're going to, a little bit of a transition here. He Now he goes from talking to his people to talking to Assyria. So the next uh, couple of verses are judgment on Assyria. Uh, the Lord has a burden against them, against them. Verse 27, his lips are full of indignation, his tongue like a devouring fire, his breath like an overflowing stream that reaches to the neck to sift the nations with a sieve of futility and cause the bride, and there shall be a bridle in the jaws of the people causing them to err. He's going to bring that bridle and kind of stop them. And you shall have a song as in the night of the holy festival is kept and gladness of heart when one goes with a flute to come into the mountain of the Lord, the mighty one of Israel. The Lord will cause his glorious voice to be heard and show it with the descent of his arm, with indignation, his anger, and the flaming, a devouring fire, with scattered tempests and hailstones, 
For through the voice of the Lord, Assyria will be beaten down as he strikes with a rod. So the people that were the tool, in a sense, to oppress, and the Lord permitted to come and oppress and destroy and, and take Israel captive, uh, then they also will be judged for what they did as the Lord comes to, seeks to restore and to renew Israel. Uh, so Assyria will be beaten down as he strikes with a rod. And in every place, the staff of punishment passage, which the Lord lays on him, it will be like with tambourines and harps and with the battles of brandishing, he will fight it. So we see Assyria being judged. <sighs> Comes back, chapter 31, once again, going back, talking about Egypt, the world. Uh, it's emphasizing this point, don't rely on Egypt. Don't rely on the world. Whoa, once again, whoa to those who go down to Egypt for help, who rely on horses, who trust in chariots, uh, because there are many. Uh, the, or horsemen who are strong. Woe to you who do not look on the Holy One of Israel nor seek the Lord. So you trust in Egypt, trust in the world, but you don't trust in God. Woe, be careful. Warning. Uh, he will, he, yet he who is wise, sorry, yet he also is wise and will bring disaster and will not call back his words, uh, but will arise against the house of evildoers and against the help of those who work iniquity. Um, think of this. It says, the Egyptians, they're men. You trust in men and not God. Uh, who are you going to trust in? Their horses are flesh and not spirit. Egyptians, men, horses, flesh. God is God, spirit. And the Lord stretches at his hand, both he who helps will fall and he who is helped will fall down. So basically, if you trust in Egypt, Egypt will fall and you'll fall also. They will perish together. And so don't trust in Egypt. The Lord has spoken, verse 4, as a lion roars, as a young lion over his prey, his prey, he's spoken. The Lord is going to come down to fight for Mount Zion, for its hill, like birds flying about. So the Lord will defend Jerusalem. Defending, he will deliver it. Passing over, he will preserve it. So don't trust in Egypt. Don't trust in the world. Trust in God. He is the one who will save you. Uh, Assyria will fall by the sword, uh, a sword not of man. A sword not of mankind will devour him. He shall flee from the sword, and the young men shall become forced labor. So don't trust Assyria. Don't trust Egypt. The Lord is the one we need to trust and um, trusting in him once again the knowledge know who god is man egypt flesh uh god spirit god <laughs> just his name god uh he is a powerful one and he's going to reign in righteousness as we see in the next chapter behold the king will reign in righteousness and princes will rule in justice isn't that what we want uh, in Mexico, we have elections this, this week, and we, we would love to have a king, well, a president, who reigns in righteousness and princes, let's say, you know, senators and, uh, you know, uh, representatives that reign with justice. Of course, that's the Lord. Uh, and unfortunately, what we get is not always that. And uh, it's usually more a little messy, but uh, hopefully we'll see what happens on Sunday. But we want our, our goal, our desire is to have a king who reigns in righteousness and princes who ro rule with justice. Um, and we don't always have that, just like they didn't have it, because they didn't seek God. They didn't seek him. Um, the foolish person, <laughs> verse 5, or actually, let's, let's go to the stuck here. Um, what is the reality? A man will be as a hiding place from the wind and a cover from the tempest and rivers of waters in a dry place and a shadow of great rock in a weary land. The eyes of those who see will not dim and the ears of those who hear will listen. So that's what we want. The ears of those who, the eye who's, who see not to grow dim and the ears of those who listen uh, to, um, to hear. Um, the heart of the rash will understand knowledge. So those who are rash and kind of will finally get it and understand knowledge. The tongue that stammers will be ready to speak plainly. So those who stammer will be able to speak plainly. What? When the king in right reigns in righteousness and the princes rule in justice, all these things happen. So the foolish person will no longer be called generous, nor the miser said to be bountiful. Um, the foolish person uh, will speak foolishness and his heart will work iniquity to practice ungodliness, to utter error against the Lord, to keep the hungry unsatisfied. He will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. 
and the schemes of the schemer are evil. He devises wicked plans to destroy the poor with lying words. Even when the needy speaks justice, a generous man devises generous things, and by generosity he shall stand. So even then we'll see the foolish will continue doing foolishness. The schemer will do schemes and try to destroy the poor, but the generous will be continue in that same nature. So the, the seeking, as we seek the Lord, let's not be foolish. Let's not be schemers. Let's, let's not try to do or in our own foolishness, follow our own ideas, but to seek to follow the righteousness of God. May we be those who hear and see and understand uh, the, like uh, have understand knowledge. May we, may we speak plainly and may we not be like the foolish person. May we not be like the, the schemer. May we not be like those who do not listen to the Lord. Um, then it speaks a little bit to the women. Rise up, you women who are at ease. Hear my voice. You complacent daughters, complacency. Give ear to my speech. In a year and some days, you would be troubled. You complacent woman, your vintage will fail. Your gathering will not come. So if, if you're complacent, if you just, if you do not do the effort to do the work uh, because you're at ease, it says, tremble, you women who are at ease, be troubled, you complacent ones, strip yourself, make yourself bare and gird yourself with sackcloth on your waist uh, because everything's going to fail because you were not doing the work you were supposed to do. Um, verse 14 tells us why, because the palaces will be forsaken, the bustling city will be deserted, the forts and towers we become layers forever of joy, of, a joy of wild donkeys and a pasture flock. Unto the spirit is poured out from on high and the wilderness becomes a fruitful field and a fruitful field is counted as a forest. Because of your complacency, when this is, destruction is going to come until the Lord restores and becomes and makes it a fruitful place again. When he does, we see verse 16, then justice will dwell in the wilderness and righteousness will remain in the fruitful field. The work of righteousness will be peace and the effects of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. Quietness, quietness before the Lord. I like that. Um, many people will dwell in peaceful habitation and secure dwellings in quiet resting places. Though hell comes down in the forest and the city is brought low in humiliation, blessed are you who sow beside the waters, who send out freely, send out freely the feet of the ox and the donkey. Woe to those who seek the Lord. I mean, not woe. Blessings to those who seek the Lord. Uh, blessed are you who seek the Lord. And once again, justice, mercy, love. I'm going to bring justice. You complacent ones. You're going to. This is going to happen. But in my mercy and in love, I'm going to restore. It's, it's almost you hear the anxiety of, of Isaiah as he's saying these words from the Lord. Why do you not understand? Why do you not seek the Lord? Why do you, uh, are you foolish and seek your own understanding? Um, distress. And that's what we see in the next chapter. Prayer and deep distress. Woe to you who plunder, though you have not been plundered. And you who deal treacherously, though you have not dealt treacherously with you. you. When you cease plundering, you will be plundered. When you make an end to dealing treacherously, they will deal treacherously with you. It's like we, you're going to get back what you're doing. Um, understand this. Woe to you. And then Isaiah goes, oh, Lord, be gracious to us. We have waited for you by their arm every morning. Our salvation also in time of trouble. Lord, we wait for you. We want you to be our salvation. Um, this destruction is coming. When the noise of the tumult, people shall flee. When you lift yourself up, nations will be scattered and you sh your plunder sh shall be gathered like the gathering of a caterpillar as a running to and fro of locusts. He shall run upon them. The Lord is exalted when he dwells on high. He is filled sign with justice and righteousness. That's the goal, filling his land with justice and righteousness. Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times. Once again, we see the importance wisdom and knowledge will bring stability in our time and the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Uh, the valiant ones will cry outside. The ambassador, ambassadors of peace, of peace shall weep bitterly um, because there is peace. They, they will not let, be needed anymore. The highways shall the, lie waste. The traveling man ceases. He has broken the covenant. He has despised the cities. He regards no man. Bring judgment, Lord. Bring your righteousness to this destruction that has happened. Um, 
the Lord says in verse 10, I will rise. I will be exalted. I will lift myself up. You shall conceive chaff and bring forth stubble. Your breath as fire shall devour you. The people shall be like burning of lime. The thorns cut up. They shall be burned in the fire. Um, fearfulness has seized the hypocrites. Verse 14. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with the everlasting burn, uh, burnings? He who walks righteously and speaks uprightly, he who despises the gain of oppressions, who gestures with his hands, refusing bribes, who stops his ear from hearing bloodsheds and shuts his eyes away from you, those who seek the Lord. He will dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the for fortress of rocks. Bread will be given to him. His water shall be will be sure. The one who walks with the Lord, the one who seeks the knowledge of him will be will be given bread, will be have uh, his water, will be sure he'll have everything he needs. His eyes will see the king in his beauty. They will see a land that is very far off. Uh, they will see him. It's, and then, then it uh, continues on you know, speaking about this judgment, those who follow him and those who don't. It says, your heart will mediate on terror. Where is the scribe? Where is he who weighs? Where is he who counts the towers? You will not see a fierce people, a people of obscure speech beyond perception, these of a stammering tongue that you cannot understand. These are the invaders coming against them. Look up on Zion, the city of appointed feasts. You will see Jerusalem, a quiet home, a tabernacle that will not be taken down. Not one of the stakes will ever be removed, nor will any of the cords be broken. But there the majestic Lord will be for us, a place of broad rivers and streams in which no galley of oars will sail, nor majestic ships pass by. For the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. The Lord will be the one who saves us from these invaders. He will save us from the, the, those who want to destroy us. He will be our king. Um, your tackle is loose. You, they cannot strengthen their mass. They cannot spread the sail. The, then the prey of great plunder is divided. The lame take their prey, and the inhabitant will not say, I'm sick. The people who dwell in it will be forgiven their iniquity. Forgiveness is what the Lord is going to bring. And uh, as he brings his reign and his rule, and as he reigns in righteousness, he will judge the nations, as we see in the next chapter. To come near you nations and hear, heed your people, let the earth hear, and all that is in it, the world and all the things that come forth, for the indignation of the, indignation of the Lord is against the nation, his fury against their armies. He has utterly destroyed them. He has given them over to the slaughter. The Lord is, is judging the nations. Um, verse 5, my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Indeed, it shall come down on Edom and on the, my, on the people of my curse my, for judgment. For the sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is overflowing with fatness, with the blood of lambs and goats and the fats of kidneys of rams. The Lord has, sac has a sacrifice in Basra and will have a great slaughter in the land of Edom. And he's talking about the judgment that is coming, the Lord's vengeance for what we see, the cause of Zion. Verse 8, for the day of the Lord's vengeance, the year of recompense for the cause of Zion, what they have done to his people. And continues talking about the vengeance that is going to uh, come. And it says, this is all will happen. Verse 16 says, search from the book of the Lord and read, none of these shall fall, none of these shall lack her mate, for my mouth has commanded it, and my spirit has gathered them. He has cast a lot for them. His hand is divided. Among them, there will be a measuring line. Once again, that measuring line, whether they follow him or not, they shall possess it forever. Generation and generation, they shall dwell in it. The safety for his people, judgment on the nations who do not seek him, who do not follow him. And we continue seeing how the Lord will bring his glory. And here we come to this uh, last chapter we're going to look at again, looking to the future, the glory of Zion. Um, we started with a lack of knowledge and the consequences of a lack of knowledge and the destruction and judgment that was going to come on Zion. Then we see the Lord uh, restoring after the judgment, restoring them, bringing them back and establish them and giving them safety from their enemies and bringing them back to the knowledge, forgiving them. So we see here now in chapter 35, the wilderness and the wasteland shall be glad for them after the destruction. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. So once again, we will have a restoration. It shall blossom in abundance and, re and rejoice, even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the excellence of Carmel and Sharon. The glory of the Lord, the excell excellency of our God, strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. 
Say to those who are fearful hearted, be strong, do not fear. So those who have been judged and now can strengthen the weak hands, firm the weak knees, uh, and give them a, uh, take away their fearful heart and make them strong. Behold, your God comes with a vengeance. With a recompense of God, he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf be unstopped. Remember, we started with the, they were blinded and they weren't able to hear. And now he says, now you will be, be able to see again and you will be able to hear again. And um, the Lord will restore uh, because what happened because of your lack of knowledge. Now he will restore and give you that knowledge. The lame will leap like a deer. The tongue of the dumb shall sing. The waters shall burst forth in the wilderness, the streams in the desert. The parched ground shall become a pool. The thirsty lands, a springs of water. Um, verse 8, a highway shall be there, a road, and it shall be called a highway of holiness. Uh, the unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for others. Whoever walks in the road, although a fool, shall not go astray. Even if you're a fool and you walk on that road, you won't go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall be any ravenous beast go upon it. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. With everlasting joy on their heads, they shall obtain joy and gladness. And the sorrow of and sighing shall flee away. So we see here a restoration. And in a sense, it's still a future restoration. The, the land of Israel has been restored. In 1948, Israel became a nation again. And it went from a desert, a, a desert place, and it's been made green and flowing again. But we still see the hearts of the people have not been restored. There's, there's still the work the Lord needs to do, do to bring that restoration, the, the final, in a sense, restoration we see here, the knowledge of the Lord. Uh, there are many who, in Israel, uh, Jewish people who are coming to know Christ uh, and knowing to come to know him as the Messiah and seeing him. But there are still many who still have their ears stopped and their eyes uh, blinded and they do not see. But as we see in God's word, one day they will see, one day they will understand. And in the midst of this still nations coming against them in the sense of, the, of the, this, the Israel being that center in the sense of, of this world conflict, as we see even today, uh, the Lord will bring uh, not only the Jews, but, but others, you know, to come to know him and to restore and reign and uh, bring uh, his rule and bring their hearts over to him. And uh, it's a beautiful thing to see because I think we can learn not only looking at future prophetic things, but looking at ourselves. Um, we need to know more about him. Uh, we need to know about Christ. We need to have that knowledge uh, fill us and help us to grow in him and not be blinded, not be uh, deaf to the word of the Lord, because there are consequences if we do. May we know him, may we know his word, and may we seek to know him and rest in him. Um, may we not take refuge in our lives. May we not take refuge in our lives, but may we, may we have that understanding that we need. May we rest in him um, may we return to him and rest in him so we can be saved in, in quietness and confidence will, shall be our strength. May we seek the Lord and, and quietly rest in him. And that's my prayer for you today. May you understand and know the Lord more each day. And may you seek to read his word and just read through it and see the things that he, that he shows you and teaches. Ask him as you read his word, Lord, I want to know more. I want to understand more. And may we have the understanding that we need to grow in him, to follow him, because he's given us a manual for life. May we seek him each and every day. And Lord bless you and keep you, and I'll see you next week.